Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout, joined by Alan Malventano. And we are here today to discuss with you the release of OCZ's newest SSD product, the Tryon 100, which is not a 100 gig drive. It nope. is the series name. Mm -hmm. This is a product available in a 240, a 480, mm -hmm. and a 960 gig capacity. And a 120. And a 120? Mm -hmm. Okay, we just didn't get one of those in, right. in for testing. Um, so you can see we've got them all laid out here. Well, three of the four, I guess, mm -hmm. now laid out here. Most of them. This is um, an interesting product for several reasons that we'll discuss, right? So this is a... We're kind of coming into the first couple of products that are introduced from OCZ since kind of being acquired and fully integrated into the Toshiba monolith, yes. if you will. Um, so tell me a little bit about this product. Is it a new controller? Is it new flash? Is it both? What kind of segment are they targeting with this particular device? All right, so this is Toshiba's TLC slash SLC hybrid flash. Okay, so this is the, uh, it's the same flash everywhere, but how the controller accesses it yes. determines whether or not it, it is TLC or SLC Right, so in other words, flash. like a portion of each flash die okay. would be segmented off and be like, okay, this is SLC and all the rest is TLC. Okay. That way it can have a little bit of a buffer uh, because TLC flash typically has more of a limit on the write speed. Mm -hmm. So if you have some SLC off to the side, that way you can kind of catch you know, the, you, know, you want to dump a couple of the files on your SSD. The of writes. Yeah, okay. so that way you're not limiting how Windows is like waiting on the SSD for things to happen. Or okay, well that's like good. That. Yeah. Do we know how big the cache size is, the SLC kind of portion of these drives? Uh, Toshiba, and they say Toshiba, not necessarily OCZ, because OCZ on this particular product is getting all their information from Toshiba. Okay. Uh, but Toshiba was kind of tight-lipped. So we really don't have that much information. Right. As far as we understand, it's supposed to be equivalent to the Samsung 850 uh, Evo. proportions. Yeah, the 850 yeah. Evo proportions, okay. how, they, how they segmented theirs. Um, which how do they do theirs? They, theirs in these particular, like equivalent to these, it would range from 3 gig to 12 gig. 3, 6, 12. Yeah. Gotcha. That's how the Samsung... Okay. And are we seeing something that indicates that is probably the case with our performance results? No. No? No. Okay, well, we'll talk about that in a second. What yeah, about we'll the control? So I guess on the TLC side, uh -huh. this, is this the first non-Samsung TLC we have seen? Like a product with yeah. TLC and SLC? Yeah. Because we've seen just TLC. Okay. From, you know, just, I mean, other companies have made SSD. Even Intel has made like an SSD that had TLC. Right, right, right. But in right. terms of like the... The hybrid. The hybrid of, caching yeah. system. Yeah, so this is the first okay. outside of Samsung's memory okay. outside of Sam Samsung's uh, flash memory yeah now what about the controller itself it is the Toshiba controller is uh, technically called the Toshiba controller TC58 yeah, we I just got I uh, think, indicated on that I think the TC means Toshiba controller Toshiba controller 58 there you go uh, I, I think that's okay yeah, yeah. hey you got to pick you got to pick letters for some reason so that's so, as good as any so OCC drive not indie links right on the controller right? sure so it's basically most of the stuff in here is all from Toshiba Okay. Pretty much, right? Toshiba Flash, Toshiba Controller. I mean, it seem, that seems to make sense, right? If you're mm -hmm. Toshiba, you look at what Samsung has done and how they have this completely vertical integration from their mm -hmm. uh, design to the controller to the Flash to, you know, product to the, to the reseller. This is kind of their avenue for doing that uh, under the Toshiba umbrella. Yes. Right. Anything, so what about the controller stands out? Is it uh, unique or different in any way? Is it... So as soon as we open up the drives, uh, it was pretty apparent that this looks like it might be a rebrand of the Fizon S10 controller. And I say that because, as you guys probably see in B-roll that's rolling right now, uh, it looks pretty much identical. The PCB so layout Looking is exactly at the actual the layout of, of one of these Tryon 100 drives mm -hmm. versus the other Fizon based drives that we have looked at yeah, before. Yeah, I, I opened up Patriot Ignite and just laid it right next to it. As far as you know, what the PCBs look like, yeah. layout is identical, chip placement is identical. Okay. If it's not a rebrand, then Toshiba went out of the way to make a controller that was <laughs> wired the exact same way as a, as a Fizon S10 controller. Um, now we've tested the Fizon S10. It's, it was in a couple uh, times at least. Yeah, it was in that that really heavy brick of a Kingston. Oh, great! Now I can't remember the whole. SSD now. No, no, no. Uh, it was the nice one, like the. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Um, there was a Kingston SSD. It was a Patriot Ignite. Um, there was a Corsair Force. 
XT, I think. It was yeah. one of those. Um, so we've tested some of those, but all of those were MLC only. Okay. Right? So this is the first time we've seen that controller, what we think is that controller, paired with the TLC-SLC combination. Right. So let's just get down to it then. If that's the technology, we're looking at SATA drives or mm -hmm. two and a half inch drives. Mm -hmm. Everything else in terms of form factor and compatibility is going to be the same. Yep. What do we see in terms of performance? Let's start with read speeds. What are they kind of rated at and what do we see in our testing? Uh, so the ratings for reads is just basically saturating SATA. I mean, I could rattle off a bunch of 520 or 530 or 540, but all, all those numbers are pretty much, they're just saturating okay. SATA, really. Um, so that's good. At all capacities, we're seeing that. It looks like all capacities, okay. all the way down to 120, it should still saturate SATA. Okay. Yeah. So that's good for read speeds. Correct. Now, write speeds, we had uh, more issues. We had some concerns. We had some more issues. Now, if you look at the specs from OCZ, uh, of course, they're going to claim the SLC write speeds, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and which is also very close to saturating SATA. It's typically 500 or plus, maybe for the, sure. the smallest drive might be in the high 400 or something like that. Right. Um, the thing is that with these, as we tested, even as simple as just taking a large file and just copying it straight to one of these drives, uh, you don't get that for very long, unfortunately. Okay. So as far as how long, I was seeing the 240 was giving us about three gig worth of SLC cache. Okay. Fits Which in is line expected. with the cache. That's right. expected. Right. The issue is that things started going a little backwards and unexpected as we went higher in the capacities. The 480, which you would figure would have six gig. Right. That would be my uh, guess. Was really acting more like it had two. Hmm. Okay. And the 960, which you would figure would have 12 gig, was acting like it had four. Odd. Okay. Yeah. And, and simple to tell. You just copy a large file from a faster drive to it, and then you can just see, you know, Windows. Watch when the actual you transfer rate drops. And it just falls off, right? And we'll have some pictures in the review of that just for people to see what it looks like. So, so what happens after you kind of use up that SLC cache? Now, what you would typically see in drives doing this kind of hybrid flash thing, and we can compare like Samsung 850, you know, Evo. 850 Evo to right. this, right? Um, the 850 Evo, a 250 gig model of that, drops down to 300 meg per second. Okay. Once it runs out of cache. So that's its kind of slower level base That's line the TLC right Running speed. a TLC. Okay. Um, and what's this, the try on 100 do? The 240 mm -hmm. drops to 113. Okay. That's a lot lower. That, that is a lot lower. Yeah. yeah. Even the 120 gig 8, 850 Evo only drops to 150. It doesn't drop okay. that low. Does right? that go up as we go up the try on 100 stack? That's the other confusing thing. Because with every other SSD we've tested, when you're limited on the write speed based on a smaller capacity drive, yeah. typically when you double the capacity, you roundabout double the write speed. Sure. You have twice as many dies to access to, to send access. data to at the same the, time. The dies are presumably the limit mm -hmm. of you know what's holding you back. Okay, so 240 here did 113, um, 480 did 120, 960 did 125. So it went up a little bit, but not much. Not much. Uh, this is a terabyte SSD limited to 125 meg per second continuous writing. So if you were cloning from some other SSD to this, right. this would definitely be the limit, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's interesting. So we're seeing lower performance than we would like to see yes. uh, compared to similar kind of configurations in the market. One thing I will say, and this is just kind of, I'm not trying to defend anybody in this sure. in this result, but that when you're running inside that first four gigs of writes, mm -hmm. where do you run at with this? 400 it's, something? It's, it's like 500 meg per second. Okay. Yeah, it's basically full speed. So it's anytime you would write more than four gigs kind of in one successively, chunk. Yes. right? Maybe installing a game or doing an image or something like yeah. that. Anything with continuous writes. If you were uh, extracting an archive that was large, right? and it was reading from it and writing back to itself, now it doesn't have a chance to kind of empty that buffer because right. it's busy doing other things, so it'll just kind of like get stuck at the, at the slow speed, right? It's probably fair to say that for normal usage, you wouldn't maybe notice that because the four gigs of cache and, right. and, it, and it copies that into the SLC mm -hmm. and then in a, during a break, it moves it off the TLC slowly, thus freeing up the rest of the SLC yeah. for that write buffer. Yeah, for your typical, right. you know, you're just doing regular kind of stuff on your PC, that's yeah. fine. Um, but the time that you do really notice that stuff is when you are waiting on something like you're doing a large transfer. Makes sense. And that's the point where you would actually be like paying attention to the computer as well. Like you're, right. you're staring at it and going, why is this going so slow? Right. right. Paying attention to the transfer the, the, speed. The file transfer. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so that concern is noted. Yes. That's not great. It's bad. Uh, what about pricing? Where are they at with pricing on this uh, as they launch? Th the launch pricing is right around, uh, it's between 37 cents a gig, and then uh, that just kind of like gets higher and higher as you get smaller and smaller. Right? So the 960 gig is about 37 cents per gig. Uh, let's see, it's uh, 370 bucks for 960 gig, so it's actually a little bit more, it's probably closer to 40. Okay. Um, I mean, that's not, um, it's definitely not the lowest we've seen out there, but... Yeah, see, that's where we get into the comparisons. Like, if we actually yeah. want to try to compare these to other drives, right? Because the equivalent, just the Samsung 850 Evo would be the direct equivalent in, in competition to this, right? right. It's SLC just with in terms TLC. Of specifications Same and stuff. Same kind yeah. of thing, right? Um, those are running, the 500 gig uh, Evo right now, as we're recording this, is 32 cents a gig. It's $162 for 500 gig. Yeah. And that's... Then what's the MSRP on this, the 480 gig variant of the OCZ Tryon? 185. Okay. So, you know, you're... So now these are MSRPs. Uh, the Samsung 850 Evo has had a lot of time to kind of settle in the market that's and true. have prices come down. I, I think, I will knowing say, the history of OCZ, that they will probably try to be aggressive with this. This is targeted to be their low cost yes. product, Yes, right? they are wanting this to be like, this is not supposed to be the power user Right. SST, right? It's, right? It has TLC in it, uh, even though Samsung can get away with marketing their 850 Evo to be kind of a power user thing. Because of the performance because differences the performance we just talked differences, about. Yeah. Right. Um, OCC is not doing that with this. They're not trying to say that, you yeah. know, this is going to be the awesome gamer SSD, Fair. right? Um, even though, I mean, if you can find a good price on one of these, it would actually make a pretty decent uh, drive for your Steam games. Because you're not you're just constantly reading. Yeah, you're reading, all the time. and yeah. the performance is good for reads. So if so you can get a good deal, you does, know. it really comes down to this needs to come down in price. It needs to be yeah. more price effic efficient mm -hmm. than the 850 Evo yes. to be considered for us to recommend it over anything else. Yes, right. That's where we're at. I, yeah, I mean, because it, I mean, if you can get if you can get an 850 Evo for cheaper than the, these drives that are not performing as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, we can't really yeah. recommend those yeah. over, you know, unless they get much cheaper than the, the competing drive. Mm. Simple as that. Uh, if you guys wanna see the rest of Alan's analysis, the teardown of the drives, uh, more benchmarks, that kind of stuff to kind of justify what we're talking about here, uh, check out the full article. It is at pcper.com. We'll have the link in the description, obviously, as well. And uh, we'll, we'll, if you listen to our podcast, we'll keep track of this drive, see where it does pricing when it actually comes out, and maybe it'll. Maybe they'll, they'll recognize the kind of deficiencies in performance right. and be a little bit more aggressive on pricing than the kind of launch MSRPs. That seems to be what they need to do to make the, the Tryon 100 kind of a, a competitive part. Yeah. So thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks.